Born into Brussels was directed by Dana Bresky and Rose Krugman, which starred from 1997. For be able to enter and live in a Kokoda Brussels, Dana spent two years for disciplining the worries of sex workers and children. They worked on this project for almost 10 years and finally got it being released in 2004. This film describes lives in a red light district from the perspective of the children who were born into the brothel. And filmmakers told the children photography skills during the production process and tried to help the children get out of the brothel. It was extremely successful and achieved so many awards. Here's the beginning of the film and let's have a watch first. আমাদের বাড়িতে যারা ঢোকে তারা খারাপ লোক মদ মাতার লোক এরকম ঢোকে অনেক কিছু গালাগালি খিস্তি দেয় বলে তুই কি লাইনে নামবি এরকম বলেছে বলে দুদিন পরে এরকম গালাগালি দিয়েছে As we just watch it, the film begins with a two-minute music and video showing us the most realistic streetscape of the red light district. Although there is no narration introduction, the amount of information it contains was huge. Through the images, we can see how messy, noisy, and crowded. It can also be said that the entire industry chain is thriving. The author's monologue also explained to us the purpose of the film, which is to reflect the light in the red light district through the children's perspective, and the author's expectation of teaching the children to take pictures and helping them to get out of the brothel and receive education. The history of the film can be tracked back to 1995, when Dana went to India for the first time and produced a story about little girls who were murdered. Since then, she has developed a passion for making words to reflect the state and the survival of Indian women. 
The Indian government at that time was a complicated system that would not provide education for the children of criminals or paperless people. Prostitution is legal in India per se, but it is a crime to own or manage a brothel. An estimated 1.2 million children are involved in prostitution in the country. Around 40 girls under the age of 15 are forced into the trade every day. About 3 million prostitutes are active in India and an estimated 11,006 workers live in its multi-stored brothel of Sanagacha area. Because, in, because of the illegal activities, the woman in this film has no right to resist and that if something goes wrong, they will be alone because they have no support from law enforcement agencies and there is no law to protect them. After the film was released, it won a large number of international awards, including Oscars and Emmy, and also has achieved a box office of more than 3.5 million US dollars. After that, they disclosed that Zana funded kids with cameras in 2002, a non-profit organization that aims to educate and export poor children through photography. Soon after the documentary was released in 2004, Helder, who is one of the kids from the documentary, received a financial support from that allowed him to resume attending a high school. However, there were also quite a lot of people who have questioned if this documentary is a method of Western capitalized to suppress or ugly Asia, or if the directors used the prostitutes and the children for themselves. The responses to Born into Brothels were varied, with many people, mainly in the West, marvelling at it and giving it rave reviews. On the American website Rotten Tomatoes, the critical consensus stated that it was a powerful and uplifting film. After all, to any outsiders, it shows a woman swooping in to save some children from a terrible fate of sex work. The documentary has won many awards, such as the Academy Award for Best Documentary and the Independent Spirit Truer Than Fiction Award. However, according to the Week 7 reading, many South Asian viewers criticised the film. It was seen to be inaccurate and represented the Indian people poorly. One Indian magazine, The Frontline, said that if the film were remade as an adventure thriller, the poster would read, New York filmmaker Zana Brisky sallies forth among the natives to save souls. This satirical and sarcastic reading of a tagline points to the skewed perspective Westerners have of South Asia and specifically India. Furthermore, the film could be accused of poverty porn, which is a term used to describe videos and articles that exploit people experiencing poverty or poverty-based hardships to generate revenue and gain viewers. While most of us could guess this wasn't the intention of Briskies and Kaufmans, it is a slippery slope and sometimes good intentions can miss the mark. To Vietnamese filmmaker Trinity Minha, a documentary like this one is essentially gossip. We speak together about others. Is this film fairly representing its subjects and their lifestyles? Does it feel exploitative? Or is it 100% honest and telling a complete story? While we think about these questions, let's watch this scene of the children on a trip to the zoo. Oh, 
你坐这。चिड़ियाघर पोषिला अरे खांचर मुद्दे बंद हैं तारा खूब कम खावर पाए दिनी एक बार पाए तारा इट्टी इट्टी कर पेट भरे कितने बंद हैं अरे आधी रात वाला देखिया मैं ऑरेंज पोषिला की जो प्लास्टिक है एक ना पोषिला की जो प्लास्टिक दिले हमारे घर में सब लोग किसी बोले ना कुछ बाकी जाने उन्हें खावा टाइप खेल ना ऐसा भी है पक्के खाला In this scene, the music is upbeat and fun. It pairs together suitably with the moods of the children as they're excited to be visiting the zoo. We see them playfully mucking around in the back of the taxis and even trying to race the other taxi there. The music along with the children becomes a bit more sombre when they're at the zoo and looking in at the animals. One of the children, Gore, describes how the animals are shut in their cages and fed only once a day. The kids get shots of the animals looking at them through the bars of the cages. The day at the zoo, like many scenes in the movie, are bittersweet. The audience can't help but find comparisons between the lives of the children and the lives of the animals. The documentary has a powerful shift with this scene. It forces the audience to notice that even the merry experiences for the children are shaded by the poverty around them. Born into brothels doesn't use the typical shot reverse shot method to thread together the opening of the film. Shot reverse shot refers to the camera shooting one subject talking, presumably to someone off screen, and then switching to the other person, indicating that the two are in conversation. Instead, the opening, and indeed what conjoins many scenes together in the movie, is a montage of photographs taken by the film crew and, more importantly, the subjects. Every 10 minutes or so in the film, we're introduced to one of the children. This is done so that we feel the group is more slowly and naturally integrated into our conscience. Most of the verbal content we get from the subjects is them talking freely, either to Brisky or each other. This helps the content not feel forced or too structured, but more as though we're there with them and we can trust what we're seeing. The camera people are not shown in the film, and instead what we see are the children holding cameras. This helps to give the audience a sense of closeness to the subjects and offers a personal touch. It makes the story feel more theirs over production teams. Furthermore, Brisky's translator is not shown. Because of this, it seems as though she speaks the language, Bengali, fluently. This blurs the depiction of her actually being an outsider from America. So, my questions for the class are, one, what were your initial thoughts on the film? Two, do you think Brisky and Kaufman did enough to avoid exploiting the people of Sonagachi? And three, are the filmmakers guilty of producing poverty porn? Ethics in Documentary Practice Alftahide and Jazzy's Honest Truth suggest there are two kinds of relationships that raise ethical questions in documentary film. The first being the filmmaker's relationship with the subject, which is explicitly shown in Born into Brothels as Brusky directly engages with the children. The second is the filmmaker's relationship with the viewer. As a filmmaker, there are different protocols and principles to follow to make sure they are honouring the subjects, viewers and production team to avoid any sort of exploitation. Honest Truths found there are three kinds of ethical principles. It's important to make sure the subjects aren't being exploited or left off worse than before. The filmmakers shouldn't deceive the viewer or the subject whilst doing what they're contracted to do. Key ethical issues with the film. 
Ruski actively ignores the wishes of the children's parents on several accounts. There are also ethical issues with the representation, as the parents are presented negatively. The vulnerability of the children weren't respected, as their lives had worsened after the production. The children were deceived, as they were promised a life out of the red light district. As a viewer, we're also being deceived. Partha Panjiri, a translator that worked on the production of the film, noted that the film fails to inform viewers that the Sunagachi district benefited from years of activism by the sex workers. Do you think that Brisky's representation of the children is biased? There are several accounts when the parents are seen hitting or yelling at their kids. Do you think that the parents' actions would be different if they weren't being filmed? Whenever the parents are being filmed, Brisky and Kaufman capture them to be unfit, which poses some really interesting questions surrounding the ethics versus aesthetics of the film. Is it ethical to include this imagery, and is it contributing to the filmmaker's argument in a positive way? The relationship between the filmmaker and subject are obscured. There is a scene in the film where Brisky struggles to get identification and rations for the children. The struggle and exhaustion on her face accentuates how invested she is in the children's lives, embodying the performative mode. The fact that children call Brisky Zana auntie suggests to the audience she is the only fit adult in their lives, which casts a negative light on their parents. Which makes us think, is it ethical for Brisky as the filmmaker to play such an emotional role in the children's lives? An Oscar winner then, a sex worker now. The subjects from Born into Brothels were actively deceived, as they were promised schooling and education as a ticket out of the red light district. Although many of the cast, like Pooja, continue to work in the sex industry of Calcutta, India. This breaches the ethical principles of deception, which is most important to consider as a documentary filmmaker. As viewers, we're also being deceived. During the post-production of the film, one of the translators working on set complained the film has ethical and stylistic problems, as it fails to inform the viewers that many of the residents in the red light district work hard to help and empower the sex workers. Many red light districts, like Sonagachi, have benefited from countless years of activism, including financial institutions, health clinics, and sex education. Honouring production partners. Zana Brisky and Ross Kaufman were originally set to document the lives of women working in the red light district. However, they found the children more willing to engage with the cameras. In one of the first lines of the film, Brisky states, it's almost impossible to shoot in the red light district. Everyone is terrified of the camera. They're frightened of being found out. Everything is illegal. Do you think the filmmaker chose to capture the film in the eyes of the children because it would make a more emotionally engaging documentary? Ethical issues surrounding informed consent. The subjects of Born into Brothels were not of legal age to fully grasp the effects that the production of the documentary might have on them. Therefore, viable consent was not given. This breach is one of the most important ethical rules as a documentary filmmaker. What documentary modes does Born into Brothels fall under? The film embodies two primary modes of documentary form, expository and performative, as discussed in Bill Nichols' Introduction of Documentary. The film employs a Voice of God style voiceover to elicit their argument. The unique choice of cinematography directly corresponds with the director's spoken argument of the film. There is an authentic relationship between Zana and the children, which establishes a version of truth due to the direct engagement. Although the film doesn't explicitly follow a poetic mode, it uses elements similar to construct a highly composed visual moving story. 
through the juxtaposition of imagery to create tone and mood. Cinematography is a key element to the construction of Born into Brothels, as Brisky uses a driving mantra soundtrack and stunning visual footage co to connect with the viewers emotionally. Do you think that Brisky's representation of the children's parents is biased? Is it ethical for the filmmaker to play such an emotional role in the children's lives? Would you have disregarded the parents' wishes like Brisky if you knew that it would benefit the children in the long run? Does capturing the film through the eyes of the children make a more emotional documentary? And how honest is this representation?